Charles de Garnal Koch is an American billionaire businessman and philanthropist. As of April 2021, he was ranked as the 15th richest person in the world on Bloomberg Billionaires Index, with an estimated net worth of $63.1 billion. Koch has been co owner, chairman, and chief executive officer of Koch Industries since 1967, while his late brother David Koch served as executive vice president. Charles and David each own 42% of the conglomerate. The brothers inherited the business from their father, Fred C. Koch, then expanded the business. Originally involved exclusively in oil refining and chemicals, Koch Industries now includes process and pollution control equipment and technologies, polymers and fibers, minerals, fertilizers, commodity trading and services, forest and consumer products, and ranching. The businesses produce a wide variety of well-known brands, such as Stainmaster Carpet, the Lycra brand of spandex fiber, Quilted Northern Tissue, and Dixie Cup. Koch Industries is the largest privately held company by revenue in the United States, according to Forbes. In February 2014, Koch was ranked ninth richest person in the world by Huron Report with an estimated net worth of $36 billion. Previously, in October 2012, he was ranked the sixth richest person in the world with an estimated net worth of $34 billion, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, and was ranked 18th on Forbes World's Billionaires List of 2011, with an estimated net worth of $25 billion, deriving from his 42% stake in Koch Industries. Koch has published three books detailing his business philosophy, The Science of Success, Market-Based Management, and Good Profit. Koch also supports a number of libertarian educational organizations, including the Institute for Humane Studies, the Ayn Rand Institute, and the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. He also contributes to the Republican Party and candidates, libertarian groups, and various charitable and cultural institutions. He co-founded the Washington, D.C.-based Cato Institute. Through the Koch Cultural Trust, founded by Charles Koch's wife, Elizabeth, the Koch family has also funded artistic projects and creative artists. Along with his brother, Koch has been an important funder of think tanks that lobby to oppose environmental regulation. Chapter 1 – Early Life and Education Koch was born and lives in Wichita, Kansas, one of four sons of Clementine Mary and Fred Chase Koch. Koch's grandfather, Harry Koch, was a Dutch immigrant who settled in West Texas, founded the Kwana Tribune chief newspaper, and was a founding shareholder of Kwana, Acme, and Pacific Railway. Among his maternal great-great-grandparents were William Ingraham Kipp, an Episcopal bishop, William Bernard Kinney, a politician, and Elizabeth Clementine Stedman, a writer. In an interview with Warren Castle Jr., which was recorded in February 2016, Koch stated that as a child he did not live a privileged lifestyle despite growing up in a wealthy family. Koch said, My father wanted me to work as if I was the poorest person in the world. After attending several private high schools, Koch was educated at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He is a member of the Beta Theta Pi fraternity. He received a Bachelor of Science in General Engineering in 1957, a Master of Science in Nuclear Engineering in 1958, and a second MS in Chemical Engineering in 1960. His focus was on ways to refine oil. After college, Koch started work at Arthur D. Little Incorporated. Chapter 2 – Career In 1961 he moved back to Wichita to join his father's business, Rock Island Oil and Refining Company. In 1967, he became president of the business, which was then a medium-sized oil firm. In the same year, he renamed the firm Koch Industries in honor of his father. Charles's brothers Frederick and Bill had inherited stock in Koch Industries. In June 1983, after a legal and boardroom battle, the stakes of Frederick and Bill were bought out for $1.1 billion and Charles and his younger brother David became majority owners in the company. Despite the settlement, legal disputes continued until May 2001, when
when CBS News reported that Koch Industries settled for $25 million. In 2006, Koch Industries generated $90 billion in revenue, a growth of 2,000 times over, which represents an annual compounded return of 18%. As of 2014, Koch was worth approximately $41.3 billion according to the Forbes 400 list. Koch would routinely work 12-hour days at the office, weekends, and expected executives at Koch Industries to work weekends as well. Koch has been a director of Entrust Financial Corporation since 1982 and director of Koch Industries Incorporated since 1982. He is director of resin and fiber company Invista and director of Georgia Pacific LLC, paper and pulp products. Koch founded or helped found several organizations, including the Cato Institute, the Institute for Humane Studies and the Mercatus Center at George Mason University, the Bill of Rights Institute, and the Market-Based Management Institute. He is a member of the Mont Pelerin Society. Chapter 3 Political and Economic Views Charles Koch describes himself as a classical liberal and has formally identified as a libertarian. He is opposed to corporate welfare and told the National Journal that his overall concept is to minimize the role of government and to maximize the role of private economy, and to maximize personal freedoms. He has expressed concern for too much government regulation in the U.S., stating that we could be facing the greatest loss of liberty and prosperity since the 1930s. In addition, he has warned that drastic government overspending and a decline of the free enterprise system will prove detrimental to long-term social and economic prosperity. According to Stephen Moore, influences on Koch include Alexis de Tocqueville, Adam Smith, Michael Polanyi, Joseph Schumpeter, Julian Simon, Paul Johnson, Thomas Sowell, Charles Murray, Leonard Reed, and F. A. Harper. The presidents he most admires include George Washington, Grover Cleveland, and Calvin Coolidge. In an interview with the American Journal of Business, Koch said he owes a huge debt of gratitude to the giants who created the Austrian school. They developed principles that enabled me to gain an understanding of how the world works, and these ideas were a catalyst in the development of market-based management. In particular, he expresses admiration for Ludwig von Mises' book Human Action, as well as the writings of Friedrich Hayek. Koch, the short-term infatuation with quarterly earnings on Wall Street restricts the earnings potential of Fortune 500 publicly traded firms. He also considers public firms to be feeding grounds for lawyers and lawsuits, with regulations like Sarbanes-Oxley only increasing the earnings potential of privately held companies. Koch disdains big government, and the political class. He believes billionaires Warren Buffett and George Soros, who fund organizations with different ideologies, simply haven't been sufficiently exposed to the ideas of liberty. Koch claimed prosperity is under attack by the Obama administration and sought to warn of policies that threaten to erode our economic freedom and transfer vast sums of money to the state. In an April 2011 Wall Street Journal op-ed, Koch wrote, Government spending on business only aggravates the problem. Too many businesses have successfully lobbied for special favors and treatment by seeking mandates for their products, subsidies, and regulations and tariffs to keep more efficient competitors at bay. Crony capitalism is much easier than competing in an open market. But it erodes our overall standard of living and stifles entrepreneurs by rewarding the politically favored rather than those who provide what consumers want. His opposition to corporate welfare includes lobbying for the end to ethanol subsidies even though Koch Industries is a major ethanol producer. He is quoted as saying, the first thing we've got to get rid of is business welfare and entitlements. In an April 2014 Wall Street Journal op-ed, Koch wrote, the fundamental concepts of dignity, respect, equality before the law and personal freedom are under attack by the nation's own government. He criticized the Obama administration, saying that its central belief and fatal conceit, is that people are not capable of running their own lives. This is the essence of big government and collectivism, he wrote. He cited the current health care debacle, as an example of disastrous government control. 
He complained that he had been the victim of character assassination. Chapter 3 Section 1, Market-Based Management Koch's business philosophy, market-based management, is described in his 2007 book The Science of Success. In an interview with the Wichita Eagle, he said that he was motivated to write the book by Koch Industries' 2004 acquisition of Invista so he could give new employees a comprehensive picture of MBM. According to the website of the Market-Based Management Institute, which Koch founded in 2005, MBM is based on rules of just conduct, economic thinking, and sound mental models, harnessing the dispersed knowledge of employees just as markets harness knowledge in society. It is organized in and interpreted through five dimensions, vision, virtue and talents, decision rights, incentives, and knowledge processes. In the book, Koch attempts to apply Friedrich Hayek's spontaneous order theory and Austrian entrepreneurial theory, such as that of Mises and Israel Kirzner, to organizational management. Chapter 4, Political Activities and Philanthropy Chapter 4 Section 1, Libertarianism Koch funds and supports libertarian, and free enterprise policy and advocacy organizations. Two works that have been especially influential upon Koch's philosophy are Ludwig von Mises' Human Action and F. A. Harper's Why Wages Rise. After reading Harper's book, Koch became involved with Harper's Institute for Humane Studies, of which he became a principal supporter. He has been on the board of IHS since 1966. Since the 1980s, IHS has been increasingly interested in aiding the careers of aspiring educators, journalists, and policy professionals with an interest in classical liberal thought. Among other projects, the IHS runs the Charles G. Koch Summer Fellow Program, which has supported more than 900 students during eight-week internships at public policy organizations, both in D.C. and around the country. In addition, almost 200 institutions of higher education in the U.S. are funded by the Charles G. Koch Foundation. What all the Koch-funded programs have in common is an interest in studying free societies with an eye to understanding how economic freedom benefits humanity. In 1977, he co-founded the Cato Institute with Edward H. Crane and Murray Rothbard. In 2008, Koch was included in Business Week's list of top 50 American givers. Between 2004 and 2008, Koch gave $246 million focusing on libertarian causes, giving money for academic and public policy research and social welfare. Koch was awarded an honorary doctorate from George Mason University in recognition of his financial support through scholarships, faculty recruitment, and research grants. In June 2019, the Charles Koch Foundation announced the foundation of anti-war think tank Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, co-sponsored by George Soros Open Society Foundation. He is a board member at the Mercatus Center, a market-oriented research think tank at George Mason University. Koch's philanthropic activities have focused on research, policy, and educational projects intended to advance free market views. He has underwritten scholarships and financed the research of economists such as James Buchanan and Friedrich Hayek. He has also supported efforts to inspire at-risk young people to consider entrepreneurship, to teach American students the principles of limited government, and to connect recent graduates with market-oriented organizations, in an effort to launch their careers in public policy. Koch has given money to support public policy research focused on developing voluntary, market-based solutions to social problems. He has given to the Bill of Rights Institute, a non-profit group that educates teachers, students, and others about the Bill of Rights. He has also given to the Youth Entrepreneurs, an organization that teaches business skills to at-risk youth in Kansas schools. Chapter 4 Section 2, Climate Change Koch acknowledges anthropogenic climate change, but opposes top-down government regulation as a solution. Rather, he favors bottom-up technological innovation from private entities, saying they can lower emissions while improving efficiency and lowering costs. He has heavily funded organizations and politicians who oppose environmental regulations. 
A leaked 2012 fundraising plan indicated that the Charles G. Koch Charitable Foundation contributed $25,000 in 2011 to the Heartland Institute, an American conservative and libertarian public policy think tank. Koch has also supported the Berkeley Earth Surface Temperature Project, a scientific effort to compile an open database of the Earth's surface temperature records. The Pacific Legal Foundation, funded by Koch, has litigated against increased environmental regulation. The American Enterprise Institute received $2.1 million over two decades from the Charles Koch Foundation for its climate change denialist activities. Together with ExxonMobil's, Koch's wealth was also supplied to the Independent Institute, another think tank known for lobby in favor of climate change denial. Koch has also given money to the American Institute for Economic Research, a right-wing libertarian think tank which also lobbies against climate science. The Republican Trump administration adopted environmental policies similar to those advocated for by Koch-funded groups. Chapter 4 Section 3 COVID-19 Pandemic Koch has also given money to the American Institute for Economic Research, the right-wing libertarian think tank which sponsored the Great Barrington Declaration. His Charles Koch Foundation gave $68,100 in 2018. The Declaration's sponsor employed Emergent Order, a public relations firm which itself receives funding from Koch's foundation, registered as $1.4 million between 2014 and 2019. Chapter 4 Section 4 Political Campaigns Koch supported his brother's candidacy for vice president on the Libertarian Party ticket in 1980. After the bid, Koch told a reporter that conventional politics tends to be a nasty, corrupting business, I'm interested in advancing libertarian ideas. In addition to funding think tanks, Charles and David also support libertarian academics and Koch funds the Charles G. Koch Summer Fellow Program through the Institute for Humane Studies which recruits and mentors young libertarians. Koch also organizes twice yearly meetings of Republican donors. Charles Koch looks favorably upon the Tea Party movement. The way it's grown, the passion, and the intensity, was beyond what I had anticipated, he told an interviewer. He has funded groups opposed to Barack Obama's administration. In 2011, Koch was awarded the William E. Simon Prize for Philanthropic Leadership. The award honors the ideals and principles which guided William E. Simon's giving, including personal responsibility, resourcefulness, volunteerism, scholarship, individual freedom, faith in God, and helping people to help themselves. In July 2015 Charles Koch and his brother were praised by President Obama and Anthony Van Jones for their bipartisan efforts to reform the criminal justice system. For roughly a decade Koch has been advocating for several reforms within the prison system, including the reduction of recidivist criminals, easing the employment process for rehabilitated persons, and the defense of private property from asset forfeiture. Aligning with groups such as the ACLU, the Center for American Progress, Families Against Mandatory Minimums, the Coalition for Public Safety, and the MacArthur Foundation, Koch believes the current system has unfairly targeted low income and minority communities all while wasting substantial government resources. In February 2016, Koch penned an opinion piece in the Washington Post, where he said he agreed with presidential candidate Bernie Sanders about the unfairness of corporate welfare and mass incarceration in the United States. In 2020, Koch's Koch Industries donated $2.8 million to Republican Party causes through a political action committee. Koch Industries donated $221,000 to Democratic Party causes. On November 13, 2020, reports in several media published statements made during an interview with the Wall Street Journal by Koch about his regret that he had contributed significantly to the development of hyperpartisanship in the United States and that he will be working with Democrats, moderate Republicans, and liberals to aid bipartisanship. His forthcoming book is entitled Believe in People bottom-up solutions for a top-down world. Chapter 4 Section 5, Sports and Culture In 2002, Koch Industries donated $6 million to renovate the Wichita State University basketball arena. 
The gift was given in honor of Koch, and the arena was subsequently renamed the Charles Koch Arena. Koch has continued to be a major donor to both the university and its athletic program. In December 2014, Koch Industries and the Koch Family Foundation donated $11.25 million to the university, the largest one-time gift in school history, with $4.5 million of that going toward a plan to renovate the arena and expand the athletic program's academic support center. Several months later, when men's basketball head coach Greg Marshall was considering an offer to become head coach at the University of Alabama, Koch led a group of local business leaders and WSU boosters that raised Marshall's annual salary from $1.85 million to $3 million and kept him at the school. The raise was seen as an unprecedented move for a school outside the Power Five conferences, and likely to make Marshall among the ten highest paid college basketball coaches. Through the Koch Cultural Trust, founded by Charles Koch's wife, Elizabeth, the Koch family has provided financial support to promising artists in a variety of fields. More than $1.7 million in grants have been awarded to programs and individuals with Kansas roots. Chapter 5 Personal Life Koch has been married to his wife Liz since 1972 and has two children, Chase Koch and Elizabeth Koch. Charles and his three brothers have all suffered from prostate cancer. Koch rarely grants media interviews and prefers to keep a low profile. Time magazine included Charles and David Koch among the most influential people of 2011. According to the magazine, the list includes activists, reformers and researchers, heads of state and captains of industry. The article describes the brothers' commitment to free market principles, the growth and development of their business, and their support for Tea Party organizations and political candidates. Koch lives in Wichita, Kansas and has homes in Indian Wells, California, and Aspen, Colorado. Chapter 6 Awards Koch has received various awards and honors, including Honorary Doctor of Science, from George Mason University, for his continued support of the economics program at GMU Honorary Doctor of Commerce from Washburn University. Honorary Doctor of Laws from Babson College. President's Medal from Wichita State University in 2004. The Adam Smith Award from the American Legislative Exchange Council. The 1999 Director's Award for Global Vision in Energy from the New York Mercantile Exchange. The 1999 Governor's Arts Patrons Award from the Kansas Arts Commission. The 2000 National Distinguished Service Award from the Tax Foundation. The Spirit of Justice Award from the Heritage Foundation. The Entrepreneurial Leadership Award from the National Foundation for Teaching Entrepreneurship. The Brotherhood Slash Sisterhood Award from the National Conference of Christians and Jews. The Distinguished Citizen Award from the Boy Scouts of America. The Free Enterprise Award from the Council for National Policy. The Herman W. Lay Memorial Award from the Association of Private Enterprise Education. The Distinguished Service Citation from the University of Kansas. Honorary Life Member in the Washburn Law School Association. The Distinguished Citizen Award from Kansas State University. Induction into the Kansas Oil and Gas Hall of Fame. Induction into the Wichita and Kansas Business Halls of Fame. Spirit of Excellence Award from the Urban League of Wichita. Outstanding Humanitarian Award from the Greater Wichita Chapter of the National Society of Fundraising Executives. Wichita City Medallion. Wichita State University Entrepreneur in Residence. Wichita District Minority Small Business Advocate of the Year. The Individual Recognition Award from the Wichita Slash Sedgwick County Arts and Humanities Council. The Uncommon Citizen Award from the Wichita Chamber of Commerce. The 2011 William E. Simon Prize for Philanthropic Leadership from the Philanthropy Roundtable. The 2011 Defender of Justice Award from the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. In 2013, 
Advisory Cloud ranked him number two on their top chief executive list.